Welcome to where time stands still. No one leaves and no one will. Moon is full, never seems to change. Just labeled me mentally deranged. Dream the same thing every night. I see our freedom in my sight. No locked doors, no windows barred, no things to make my brain seem scarred. Sleep, my friend, and you will see. The dream is my reality. They keep me locked up in this cage, can't they see? It's why my brain says rage. This is the Community Solutions Podcast. Jason Bradley, Andrew Richter, deep from the bowels of our underground lair, where we are devising a plan to save thousands of of, uh, Afghan... uh, well, they're lying. There's Americans there. There's more Americans than they're letting on. There's no hundred Americans that are full of baloney. Well, they got to get the refugees over uh, to Michigan it. and Pennsylvania first. Well, yeah, that's true. Unfortunately, Jay. Yes, I know that song. Yes, there's a good chance of that. That's a heavy metal song. And that's true. Is that half a point right there? No. Okay. Quarter of a point right there? No. One one thousandth of a point right there? Maybe. <laughs> I'll consider that. Oh. It's one of those bands, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it is one of those bands. You're, you're right. Oh. You don't get any credit for that well, answer. But. The only heavy metal bands that I really, really remember, and, of course, and you're going to make fun of this, is that one Axel guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was the Tommy Lee band. Yep. And there was Metallica. Mm-hmm. And there's uh, Smoking in the Boys Room. That was also the Tommy Lee band. <laughs> yes. I know. <laughs> <laughs> what are they? Don't tell me. Motley Crue. That, but that that's not the, it. Right. That's not it, though. No. That is the Tommy Lee band. You're right. I'm going to say it's one of the bands I name, Metallica. Yes. Oh, I, honestly, that was like a 40% yeah. guess. <laughs> yeah. Welcome Home uh, Sanitarium. Okay. That is the song. Yes. One in a row, baby. Yeah. Look out, Timberwolves. I'm coming for you. Yeah, that's almost a club record. <laughs> <laughs> I get two or three more. <laughs> like I said, I'm gunning for DiMaggio. Yeah. What did I get up to once? Three? <laughs> I'm <kidding. laughs> I'm gutted for him. <laughs> yeah. Um, Jay, uh, once again, not in the greatest of moods today. Didn't listen yeah. to Robert Tilton today. Join the club. Yeah. Yeah, um, didn't do that today. So um, I, I don't want to say I'm in a crappy mood, but I'll tell you what. I watched some of those Afghanistan. I remember a few weeks ago I said this is not going off the front page. Mm-hmm. Now, I think the president tried. With his vaccine thing. Yeah. Change the subject for a few days. But I think there's a long-term strategy with that. Hear me out. Okay. What are the, what, what, where do you think that fight will end up? What institution do you think ultimately that will end at? Well, the Supreme Court. Supreme Court. What, no. is the, what does the left want to do to the Supreme Court? Wants to pack the Supreme Court. Pack the Supreme Court. So how do you do that? Now, look, it's too naked to do Mm -hmm. just blatantly they need a cause right biden pushes this mandate knowing that states are going to reject it not implement Mm -hmm. tell them to go pump a lamppost what happens in return somebody sues Mm -hmm. now this is the problem i have with republicans if you don't believe that the court should decide everything why are you suing to get it to end up in the courts. Okay, that's not mm-hmm. really how we should be doing. How I keep saying we. How they should be doing this. Right. They should pass laws yeah. signed by their governors mm-hmm. that say that you don't need... That's how we do this. We don't put lawyers in robes and let five of them decide everything. But I think that's where it's headed. This is the, that was the mistake with Obamacare. Mm-hmm. That the, 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 the attempt was to try to... Hope that the courts did what the governors and legislatures wouldn't do. But I think it ends up there. It very well could. And I think it gets shot down. It gets shot down hard. Six to three, at least. Maybe five. I mean, five at least, maybe six. 
Possibly more. I, Possibly I, I, more. I mean, I I hate. I mean, it's so wildly out of bounds. I well, mean, you you just might get. And, and here's the thing: most if, of the if court. you if you vote for that, you you literally are saying, look, you are to judge. You're the law means nothing to you. I mean, right. we already know that for eighty percent. But it's like, come on, right? The idea that the president to just declare a massive. I mean, if he can do that, he can do any. There's no limits to his power. He's a king if he can do that. Right. So, I mean, I, I think it I think it gets struck down, and that's the justification for packing the court. Yeah. See, they won't do what we want. Right. Then and, they won't retire. You know, and, and, and that's possible. Um, they, they may go that route. I'm a little more worried that they're going to make the court completely irrelevant. Um, uh, because you've had, especially with like the DACA issue where, uh, the Supreme court has slapped the, the Biden administration down and they've just started doing it again. So what happens, you know, the, the, if you have a willing legislature, the Supreme court really does not have any teeth. You know, they're, they're there to say, yes, it's constitutional. No, it's not constitutional. But if the executive branch decides, yes, we're going to keep doing this no matter what, and you've got a complicit legislature, the sky's the limit. Yeah, that's possible. I don't think they want the courts irrelevant, though, because what happens if Republicans are in charge of... <laughs> You know, yeah, the shoe could be I on the know. other foot. Remember they remember the nuclear option when Harry Reid yeah. did that, and then the Republicans did that to them? I mean, yeah. there there is a little bit of and I think that's why you haven't seen this go forward. You know, because Republicans could go back to court too. Yeah. And I mean I, I mean they won't because number mm-hmm. one, they have no guts, and number two, it's wrong. I mean, right. it's just it's wrong. So but I think that there's I thought the nuclear option was wrong. Yeah. Republicans never used it under President Bush. They certainly could have. They had all the justification in the world. Didn't. Yeah. Democrats decided, well, hey, thanks for not doing it, but we're going to. I mean, yep. didn't burn them many things. So, I mean, I I think you're in for, I think, you're, I think Biden wants to pick a court fight somehow, whether it's the mm-hmm. Texas abortion law or whatever. I mean, you got Keith Ellison trying to sue about the Texas abortion law. And it's like, uh, what business is it of yours, you freaking commie? Yeah. So you're already ruining one state. Just leave Texas alone. Yeah. You know, and that's why you can't have an activist as an attorney general because they, they, they don't enforce the law. They enforce the laws they want to and ignores the laws they mm-hmm. disagree with. Right. So I don't know how that pinhead ever got there. But, you know, the thing is... and. <laughs> And please, get a decent candidate. Doug Wardlow is a sure loser. Please. Christ. Um, wow. Well, yeah. I just, you know, you're yeah. not going to win a Remax. Sorry. The, the, you know. Or can we have some competition? That would be good. I mean. <laughs> I like competition. You know, I mean, somebody should have to earn it. Yeah. But I think he well. wants a fight there. I just think he wants a fight. Somehow. Um, I think part of it is... Look, he knows he's sinking. <laughs> he's got to rally something. And I think they think they can win the talking points battle on a vaccine mandate. Now, they're starting yeah. to lose it because mm-hmm. this group's exempt. And Do you know the president and Congress are exempt? Oh, I'm sure they yeah, are. they're exempt. They don't have to do it. It's like everything else. <laughs> paying taxes, right. you know, yeah. paying for their own health insurance. You know, all those things that they don't do either. Uh, so, I mean, postal workers are exempt for some reason. Yeah, um, I don't and understand. And I don't know, maybe their union is hostile to it, you know, yeah. which is kind of dumb I, on Biden's part because yeah. I'm sure they vote Option probably. probably. Yeah, I mean, if that's what's going to be, it's going to be political exemptions like that. I mean, yeah. that's that's going to well, sink of the, the... You can't tell me it's for our own good because, yeah. of course, we don't know what our own good is. Mm-hmm. But, and, and this is why, though, I think that maybe the Supreme Court is in trouble as far as relevancy, because I see us moving closer to fascism every day. I see a stronger executive branch, one that just snubs their nose at everybody and says, forget you, we're going to do whatever we please. We're going to do this, and we're going to do that, and if you don't like it, too bad. And guess what? We know that this is probably not constitutional. We're going to do it anyways. Well, again, but that's where you have, that's where the role of governors come in, and that's where the role of, you know, we have, and again, 
I pinned some of this on the Republicans. Yeah. They made the same arguments about Obamacare, yet when they were in charge, what happened? They didn't do anything. Nothing. So yeah. you can't use that argument and then do nothing about it. I mean, every governor, uh, every red governor and red legislature, and blue ones too. I mean, I mean, yeah. it, there's not unison. It's not necessarily a red blue divide here. Right. You know, I mean, there just it just isn't. And you know, there needs to be a I mean, I there needs to be a serious debate about whether a vaccination should be forced on somebody, especially one that's experimental. You know, when you talk about you talk about measles and and all those things that those childhood kind of things that you know, those were those were vaccines that were improved upon. They were they went through long trials. They went through a painstaking process that this hasn't gone through yet. I'm not right. saying it's failing. I'm not saying it's poisonous. I'm not saying that. I'm saying to take an experimental vaccine and de- that's been around for, what, eight months now, mm-hmm. and demand that everybody, you can't work, you can't, yeah, we'll let everybody cross the border who wants to cross the border, and who knows if they're vaccinated, not kicking whatever variant that they're bringing from whatever freaking country. Right. That's all fine, you know, because they'll vote Democratic, so it's okay. But, I mean, what, I don't understand how that passes the smell test anywhere. And maybe it's also, and I, I thought about this too, maybe it's a, it's kind of, because this kind of worked. In August, if yeah. you look at va- by the way, if you look at COVID numbers, they're down right now. But it, forget that for a minute. But if you if you if you look at August vaccinations versus July, August was way higher. Minnesota too. It yeah. was something like forty percent higher. Is right. this a threat that might be backed off once the numbers reach a certain amount? I mean, we're at 75% in Minnesota. 75% yeah. is herd immunity against anything. Right. Okay, anything out there. Yeah, is it but... is it a is it a strong arm to and then all right, we'll back off of it. I think with the right kind of pressure they'll back off, but I mean really this is something that they keep around so they can apply that pressure, you know. Um you look at. Uh, you keep asking though, what's herd immunity, and you well, can never get a straight answer no, because, because you got to remember, there's people who've been vaccinated, and there's people who've had it, right? And then there's some overlap, so we should be at like ninety five percent right now. Yeah, we should be. There's but... something we're not being told. I mean, I keep coming back to there's something about the vaccine we're not being told. There's something. Do they know what they're doing? Does anybody can anybody grab their ass with both hands? I think I think the they because they want to keep this around, one case is too many. No, oh, that's possible. You know, and unfortunately with this, there's not you know, there's an animal reservoir, you know, where animals can get this. And so it can lay dormant in an animal and pop up again somewhere. This will always be with us. We're never fully going to get rid of it. And so... Well, the 1918 I, flu is still around. Right. So I think at some point... So the, it, penguin, the pangolin, the pangolin will, the, will get it. And, the pangolin, yeah. And mate with another pangolin I, and that will spread it around. To, or a penguin will mate with a pangolin. Or it will get to a I, monkey and it'll, it'll bite Patrick Dempsey or whatever, like Outbreak. Yeah, I don't know. Um, Is that Patrick Dempsey? I looked like him. Yeah. <laughs> the guy from Camp I Me Love? I don't yeah, know. it might have been. I don't, I don't remember. Um, here's, I don't know. It, it, I believe that they want to continue to use this as a reason to clamp down whenever they want to. And until people have had enough of it and they're not afraid of this thing anymore and they actually realize, hey, most of us either have had it or we've been vaccinated, you know. But then again, even with the vaccine, you, what, 40% efficacy rate? Well, I don't know, you know about, I don't know what it is because some people are asymptomatic. Some people get yeah. the sniffles for a day. Um, you know, you'd have to... There's, there's no way. Look, they don't know anything about variants either. How do you know who has the Delta variant unless you do a blood test? Mm-hmm. Oh, it's 80%. You don't know that. You take a rapid test. It doesn't tell you what variant you have. 
Right. Lo- I'd love somebody in the media to point this out. You know, I mean, uh, what the hell? Yeah. Why do I got to do your job all the time? <laughs> by the way. Yeah, yes. By the way, getting back to Afghanistan, though, for a minute. Yes. I'm going to be honest with you. I-, I have been watching some of the hearings. I told you this one go away. Yeah. And, I- and this Blinken guy is the first guy that they're sending out there to get his head chopped off. Yeah. But I got to say something here. I mean, and I... You know, I watched Marco Rubio, Ted Cruz, Rand Paul. I, I can't disagree with anything that they said, mm-hmm. quote unquote. But you know, I can't help but think there's a little grandstanding going on. You know, it's just kind of <laughs> like it's kinda, maybe. You know, I don't need your ten minute speech on something. Not saying they're wrong, but <sighs> they need to spend this time grilling and demanding answers. Yes, not giving a political speech and then talking for a minute, asking one question where Blinken can let, you know, they get 10 minutes. Right. And then boom, that democratic chair Mm. cuts them off. Yeah. You know? So it's like, we got to, we, they have to, they're not getting any straight answers here. No, they need to force him to lie under oath because he did, he has, and they haven't been able to call him to account on it. Um, He's told the Clinton lies. It's a 91% lie with 9% of, of something you could almost call the truth in an alternate universe. I don't know. Uh, you I know, mean, you, it's... Know, you know, I don't know the meaning of the word is. It depends on what is is. It's yeah. one of those lies. And they always have this boogeyman. Yeah. I'm so tired of, well, the intelligence said this. The, that's the boogeyman. Mm-hmm. Well, who? What? Yeah. And what makes me think that's BS is everybody there is still punching in tomorrow morning. It's right. like, well, if somebody f this up that bad, you know, if the president of the United States discovers something two weeks after the fact, why is it no one's held accountable for that? Yeah. And we all know why, because they know they have the intelligence to blame. Right. So it's, I mean, that's, but, but they're not getting, they're making... I want to say they're making. It's like save the speech for your fundraiser, mm-hmm. and get down to questions. Like, look, Ted Cruz gave a a, a, a soliloquy for eight minutes, <laughs> and he wasn't wrong about a thing, single thing. Nope, but he barely asked a question and a half. <laughs> but conversely, no. though, if you watch the one with the House the day before, Republicans did ask a lot of questions, but they were terrible questions. I didn't see the house. And and they were terrible questions for the most part. And it was, finally, Joe Wilson gets up and you're lying about this. Oh, you're lying yeah. about this. Yeah, you're lying Joe about Wilson, this. Yeah. You know, and, and then the guy after him, the Democrat after him says, well, that's the guy that broke in and said you're lying during President Obama's speech. You don't have to take anything into account, he says. <laughs> you know, it, it, so it, it's we... Right message, wrong messenger. It, it's just, but set should, it up for a spin, for a political spin. Yeah, I, I don't know. Can Republicans do anything right? I, <laughs> well, it's just like you know. I mean, even you know, and I don't find myself agreeing with Marco Rubio all the time. But no, he talked for about seven minutes. Quite frankly, he didn't say anything, and he was the former chair of the Intelligence Committee. Right. I mean, he got the same reports that now he's the vice chair. They get the same reports that anybody else gets. I don't yeah. remember Marco Rubio sounding the alarm, though, in April or May or June. No offense, but I don't remember that. Yeah. You know, of course, now after the fact, he he's Mr. Oh, you should have done this. He, well, dude, you're the vice chair of the Intelligence Committee. If you thought something should have gone on, it's your duty and 13 American soldiers got killed. Yeah. Where the hell were you, too? Sorry, but I mean, I have to be fair here. It's, you know... Why weren't you holding hearings then? We all, we knew this all we knew this deadline. President Trump set deadlines over two years ago for yeah. this stuff. We knew Biden's responsible for this this part of it. Yes. But the wheels for this, we've been like and I've said this before on previous shows, Jay. The whole idea of nation building that's been abandoned for a decade over there. Yeah, we've been slowly withdrawing since President Obama's second term. So mm-hmm. the idea that you know. They're all shocked at the result. We've had 10 years to figure this out. Right. Everybody effed it up. Why don't we just admit that? I mean, you have to put the most blame on President Biden's administration. Absolutely. I mean, 
<laughs> Absolutely. To say that, oh, we did everything great. We we had a success over there. How, a, how do you call that a success? I wonder you, if they're starting to believe that, though. You know, oh, I'm sure. You tell a lie enough times, yeah. and people will believe it at some point. But 13 people dying, uh, 13 American military members dying, I, you can't spin that as a success. I don't care what you do. And to sit here and listen to the things that are coming out of this administration and, and how, how they, they just skip over everything, getting rid of, of, of background, you know, Airfield, I, I, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, but no, not having a big enough perimeter. Uh, I'm sorry, but no, you know, there are, are keeping the airport at the other airport at Kabul, Kabul, Kabul. Yes. And not securing the perimeter. That's what happened in the last few days. They had the airport, yeah. the airport, but people couldn't get there. Yeah. So, I mean, it's because you put your enemies in charge of letting people through. How about how about Ding releasing dong. aid yeah. to the Taliban? You know that our tax dollars are now going to them. Oh, yes. I mean, isn't that, so that, isn't that incredible? So, so that they can bring their child brides over and, <laughs> yeah. and, and kill people in the streets. And yeah, it's lovely. I, <laughs> I, I, I'm booking my next vacation right now as we Same speak. Same government that charges Hot-wire.com. me for tabs and licenses and blah, 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 blah. But they'll give the Taliban whatever they want to. Oh, yeah. You know, they're welcomed back in the international community. <laughs> I think that's what Blinken said. Really? But I mean, I, like I said before, this is the start of it, and hopefully, it's not the. Hopefully, uh, hopefully, um, I don't have much confidence that Republicans are going to use their time a little smarter. But you know, just do us all a favor, save your speeches for this. You know, Rand Paul might have done the best. Yeah, he did digress a little too much, but um, it was uh, he's the only one that's brought up the aid. Uh, the the droning of people that they they're not sure who yeah who, which is, <laughs> I loved that exchange yeah I mean it's on the one hand it's funny on the other hand it's like oh well you're gonna do an investigation of you killed after you killed them yeah success <laughs> success in life who orders that yes I mean let me ask who orders that who uh, that orders has to come strike? that has to come from the president does it I don't it I don't does yes know. I mean um, to it my has to name the country. And keep the president of the United States in the dark. I mean, that's just not possible. Here is is how Blinken explained it. Uh, so take it with a grain of salt. But I'm going to take it, it with a salt shaker and a half. Any any big actions are determined by the president. Nothing gets by the president. Small per- procedural type decisions. Those are uh, all on the ground by the generals that are there. Um, and, and in there working with the Pentagon and however that works. But any large decisions, like to send out <laughs> a or drone to kill somebody, chief. yes, that comes from the president. And we're not sure who it was. Yeah, because we couldn't have gone in to go get Osama bin Laden without Obama's okay, and that's what took so long was getting Obama's okay, we, partially because Joe Biden didn't want to do it. Would he have to think about it for a while? Yeah. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh about it, but it's like you have a chance to kill Bin Laden. All right, hang on a second. You know, what's the score of the Bears game? Yeah, hang on. Yeah. I mean, what, what, you got something more important to do? I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Well, that's. I mean, you know, it's that's uh, entertainment for another day. Yeah. But like I said, I think the worst is yet to come here. And you know what? I'm worried about Jay. I'll say one last thing on Afghanistan. Yeah. With with the dictators back in charge, I don't think we're going to get accurate reporting out of there. It, one has to wonder what happens as far as human trafficking, women's rights, uh, things like that. Um, you know, property being taken, dissident being silenced. You know, are we going to get uh, accurate uh, uh, any kind of actual news out of there? Yeah, I know. It, it, well, I mean, there are still journalists on the ground, but they're all running for their lives because they're well, afraid of being executed in well, the street. And, and not only that, but I mean, you know. Yeah, they don't want to get strung up to a black hawk and yeah, well, hung. I understand that. Yeah. You know, but so, you know, it, it's probably already five times worse than it was a couple months ago. Probably already. Yeah, yeah, it didn't take long. I mean, it took... 
took how long to go from, oh, we've got, uh, you know, maybe six months until we have to deal with the Taliban oh, to, about, to a month, to a week. That was about a lunch to, break. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. So things went from bad to worse very quickly, and I think they're not Just go watch President Biden. Getting worse. Watch President Biden's speech in July. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to see, quite, and again, count on Republicans to mm-hmm. screw this up. Yes. That ought to be an ad in every congressional race. Should. You know, and my opponent yeah. supported this guy. Right. How right was he? Yeah. Shouldn't have to say another word. Some outlets are reporting in a little victory news is talking about a lot, but like Christians are getting killed. Of course um, they are. They're hunting them down. Uh anyone that helped the Americans, Americans. They know who it is. That, they're having to turn their cell phones off and hide and try to... I've heard that the window is closing very quickly. Not only that, but yeah. all the equipment and stuff that we left them, Yeah, they caught up about 10 centuries on weapons. Well, I mean, when they figure out how to use it, it might be a while, but... Hey, you know what? Yeah. You don't know what's on those Apache. We left 33 yeah. Apache helicopters at $300 million apiece. And I don't. I haven't been able to verify this, and maybe I shouldn't say it, but... Say it I'll, anyway. I'll have to. I'll have to look into it. Uh, that possibly the Chinese are trying to work out a deal to get Bagram Air, Air Base from the Afghani's as as a Chinese air base in the area, which would mean then that they might have access to all that stuff we left there. Hey, so why not? Maybe uh, they'll take it to Wuhan and juice yeah. it up, and uh, Fauci will fund it or something like that. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Gee. I know Golden Valley is one of your favorite cities. <laughs> the old odd year elections. Right. And, of course, a plethora of candidates they give us, all just wonderful. But I got to say, before we get into that. Sorry, yeah, before we get into that, I just want to um, I just want to say this is usnews.com, so U.S. News and World Report, oh, okay, right? yeah. Uh, reputable, supposedly, paper, you know. Well, mainstream uh, paper maybe is a better way to call it. But, yeah. Uh, um, China weighing occupation of former U.S. air base at Bagram. Hmm. Uh, that was September 7th that came out. So, oh. yes. Which I, is why it hasn't been reported on by anybody else. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so worse it gets. Yeah. As so. I, Finally, I had a prediction right. Not that I wanted to be. Yeah. You know, I don't wish for bad things to happen, but... Yeah. Speaking of bad things. Okay. Have at it. We talked about District 281's appointment for their school board. Yes. I want everybody to know this. And I ch- go ahead, go to ardale.org and look at this because I yeah. tried to find it. <laughs> they talked last night, September 15th. We're recording this on September 16th. About filling that position of course it's by appointment of course because they're conservative they don't want to right yeah the the whole expense of letting us decide who represents us and the agenda for the meeting says that they are going to discuss this from 6 to 8 Mm p.m that's it wow i cannot find a list of people who have thrown their names in i cannot find any criteria to which this is going to be I don't even know how they decide. Do they vote? Do they have to do it at a meeting? I think their next meeting is Monday. Yeah. Uh, and, of course, there's no agenda yet. And right. Maybe it will be tomorrow. But So I just want everybody to know, just to update that show from a couple of weeks ago, that, that they have put it, they have discussed it, and yet we still don't know what the forms were that anybody filled out, we don't know who it is there being because there could be two people, five people, ten people. I We don't have any idea. All right. But you're just going to get sprung upon you, a new school board member, mm-hmm. very, very soon. Because, of course, like I said, Pam Lindbergh would not have retired, had retired, mm-hmm. ran away, had, had there not. Somebody was waiting in the wings I, by anything like that. I think they had somebody lined up who could maybe take criticism from an anonymous source. And, um, <laughs> you know, they had to have somebody in mind. And they say yep. if they don't have somebody in mind, they have a profile in mind. Right. 
you know, so we'll see what happens. I mean, I, I have I've been trying to find information. I've done everything except call them. Well, and here's the thing. I, I shouldn't I, have to. Although Pam Lindbergh seemed like she was already kind of in the uh, in the camp here, but uh, that district has been moving further and further and further further into the uh, critical race theory uh, camp, the high the elementary schools or anything. But the high schools for sure now have um, have uh, gender neutral bathrooms. They do. They do have gender specific bathrooms as well, but they also have gender neut- neutral bathrooms. So, yes, this is the direction that that district is going in. And I, I, if you're a parent in that district, I mean, I'd, I'd be outraged, you know, and I'd be at the next school board meeting and reading them the right act. But it, I don't know. I, so, at my old high school. For sure, at Armstrong, I, I imagine Cooper's the same thing because the the word I heard was that yes, we have to do this. I mean, so they're they're not being left with a the principals aren't being left with a choice. This is coming from higher up. So here's my question: What happens then when uh, the football team all wants to get? Do they have a gender neutral place to uh, put their pads and their girdle and their? I was going to say jock, but I don't know if a gender neutral person does that. <laughs> you know. Yeah. I. My God. Yeah, I, I don't know what we're coming to. I, it, nothing sacred. Well, you're I, effing with kids, and that's yep. that's what pisses me off. Well, it's like the Bible says. You know, you you lead. You lead a child astray, you're better to have a millstone strung around your neck. Yeah. Well, but it's also uh, yeah. It's also like we've said, Jay, we've said this a million times, and I, I don't mean to chew my food ten times, but a teenager, a young person, you know, say 12 to 16, mm-hmm. is can be a tough time in somebody's life. Mm-hmm. Trying to fit in, trying to, you know, your no body's changing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you got raging hormones. Your body's mm-hmm. changing. You're trying to fit in. You're trying to play sports. You're trying to get an education. You know, you, it's. It, it, I, I always come back to the kids who have an absent parent or, or you know, have a bad situation at home. It's always them who are susceptible mm-hmm. to drugs and to things like that. And now, just I just wonder, just join a group. Is there the gender gender neutral? Uh, 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 Club over at Cooper and um, I probably is. Yeah, there's probably a gender neutral club. I, I I don't know that for a fact, but again, you know, I've we've mentioned it a little bit. But you look at uh, the studies that have been done. Um, Abigail Schreier yeah. wrote about it. Who's that, been shunned by right? The only place you can find her is on Joe Rogan, right? And <laughs> it, it's and, and it doesn't really happen with boys with boys it's more a a true like gender dysphoria where they go through this identity crisis and then they go through puberty and they kind of figure it out um she's done so much research abigail schreier right but with girls it it is an epidemic that is caused she calls it a social contagion and so because of that (laughs) um because it is caused by really peer pressure and wanting to fit in and that they get the the hand on the back they get the the applause they get the adulation when they choose to go you know and and declare themselves genderless or whatever uh that is a lot more appealing choice than anorexia bulimia cutting all of these things that generally that is kind of where these girls that that couldn't find their identity would would go you know and and now instead you know they go here because it, they're able to get the the congratulations and feel good about themselves yeah and the long term effects have been devastating awful. for women awful which is terrible yes. i mean not able to bear children not able to i mean look and i know teenagers don't think this way i sure as hell didn't think this way either look i didn't make I, I got to say something too. It's funny. I didn't make decisions when I was that age based on 
well, I'm 44 and I'm host two podcasts now. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, you don't yeah. make decisions based on that. So I get it. Technically, you host 1.5. I, I was going to say one, <laughs> one and a half, but I had a feeling I was setting you up. Ah. I was being the letting you uh, be like, the play by play guy. Like, or should I you let be that the... go? Yeah, I probably should. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you know, you don't no. I yeah. think to myself, I'm going to run for mayor someday, so I better not do this when I'm 16 or 18. Kids, yeah. you know, they get into stuff. And, right. And, you know, if you if you make it cool, these kids were all doing drugs or these kids were all, uh, mm-hmm. you know, juvenile delinquents or these kids were, I mean, there'd be a different reaction to this. Right. But because they're, quote, confused, and you're adding to their confusion, you know, mm-hmm. it's just, I mean, where, where does their head go after this? Anyway. Yeah. I just, I just, the frickin' Golden Valley races. And by oh, the way, 281, my. we'll find out. We'll keep updating if they ever tell us who who has applied for this right. appointment <laughs> and how they're going to decide it. I just have a feeling that... Uh, It'll uh-huh. just be strung upon us very well. Absolutely. Why not? City of Golden Valley, Jay. My favorite. This now, time first of year. off, yes. before we even talk about our, in our Golden Valley elections, before we even talk about this, I want to talk about their peace commission. Yo, peace, brother. Yeah. Now, I'm not talking about people who get around, wear tie dye t shirts and <laughs> smoke right. lots of tobacco. Um, <laughs> This is a. What do you call? Is this a commission? Yes, uh, the Golden a, Valley Peace Commission. Now, so they're taking applicants. Hold on, I love the makeup of it. It's so naked with what they're trying to do. <laughs> That's true. I I do like that they're being out front about it. Right, because I mean they're basically saying, you know, we want these kind of people looking for. They're they're. Gu- guaranteeing the result before they get before they do it. Think about it. That's good. I like that. In September of 2020, the city council approved the creation of the police commission task force to begin the process of studying how the city might replace the existing CSC. What the hell is a CSC? Hmm, I suppose it's the which commission would that be? Uh, existing. Um, Crime Stopping Commission, or I don't I don't know. Know. Uh, yeah. I'm just guessing. Yeah, the purpose of the task force was to develop a recommendation regarding the name, membership composition, and duties of a new commission on policing, and draft a proposed mission statement for the new commission. That it was eventually named the Peace Commission. <sighs> you now, its mission is to help Golden Valley Police Department. Yeah, I'm sure they want that. Yeah. Innovate, transform. That's a key word. That is. Transform its provision of public safety services based on community input needs, blah, 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 blah. Inclusivity, the same words you see everywhere. Yeah. Listen to who will comprise this. By the way, we talked about U.S. World News and Report. Yes. GoldenValleyMN.com is where <laughs> we're getting this. Yes. Okay. So it says apply to join the Golden Valley Peace Commission. It's right there. We're not making this up. Here's how they want the commission to be made up of. Three individuals, and this is a whole bunch here, three individuals representing populations historically and presently harmed by police. (sighs) My word. (sighs) You know, I got an idea. So we want three criminals. Uh, That's what they're talking about, right? Because I guarantee you there's probably nobody... I mean, there might be some people in Golden Valley that have been harassed maybe in another city or whatever. Well, but I mean, but it, police make mistakes. Let's be honest yeah, here. And the, I'm not saying every Golden Valley police officer is great. I'm not saying that any of them are criminals. I'm I'm just saying, again, we're going on stereotype. Yeah, right. You know, we, we are using things to divide people rather than bring people together. Yeah, this is supposed to bring unity. This is nothing more. This does the opposite. Yeah. So... Populations historically and presently. I'll, I want to put a mobster on here. Maybe a mobster should you know be what? on here. They're if, harmed by the police. Maybe maybe who I shot, should join. Because who shot 
Yeah, I mean, I, I've got long hair, and and in the sixties oh, and seventies and eighties, they were true. You got that bad. cowardly lion look down. You right know, now. I mean, yeah, <laughs> they always think I got drugs. Yeah. You know. <laughs> You're not true. You're a rock and roller too. You're a musician. Yeah. That's even you talk about drugs, long hair, and a musician. Talk about a stereotype. Guilty before exactly proven innocent. I'll tell you what. No doubt about it. I should be on there. You have, his but they're not looking for Whitey. Sorry. Yeah, That's, but but you yeah. have historically and and presently, I would argue that yeah. that still exists. That sure. Stereotype. Why not? So yeah, Jay will put you on. All we'll right. Put a mobster on. Um, who else has been you know, harmed by police? You know, uh, who's um, got the most DWIs in Golden Valley? We'll put them on there too because they've been harmed. Well, they, their license has been yeah, taken away. Absolutely, takes away their freedom. They got to ride the freaking bus. No wonder those people are so unhappy. I mean, yeah. you know. So I mean, basically, they're saying they want three black people. Can we just? Why can't well, I just say that? They might want a Hispanic or. The, How are his? It's it's it's, it's funny though that oh, they, that's right because immigration. Right. Uh, somebody who's been who who's been threatened to be deported. That's yep. that's who they should put on there. I. I. It's funny that they don't just come out and say what they want, <laughs> you know. But they they know in their mind what they want. Right. I mean, it's saying it without saying it is what they're yeah. doing. Here's what I love. Two Golden Valley Police Department employees who don't get to vote. <laughs> I know. What? <laughs> I kind of like a couple of Golden Valley Council members to not vote. How about yeah, that? Yeah, that'd, them- that'd be a good one. I can name a couple. <laughs> we'll name a c- employees. Notice it doesn't say officer. Right. So we'll get the clerk and we'll get... Uh, We'll get uh, the guy who does the fingerprints or something. Put them on there. We'll put. I mean, well, could yeah. it be that? Could I mean, be. Could, could be, be the janitor. I don't know. At least one, and no more than two youths, twenty-one years old or younger. Mm. Now we all know young people like to get away with stuff. Yes. So they want two young. No, they don't say how young either. Youths, Mm -hmm. 21 or younger, does that mean teenager? I mean, could they be 16? Yeah, it doesn't put a bottom on it. It just puts a a cap on it. Hmm. Youth generally means teenagers. It doesn't usually mean like an eight-year-old. No, I would say high school or older for this, but they don't say that. One individual with professional human resources or recruitment experience. Now, we know what that's for. But you know why the youth are being put on it. Shape their minds. Right. Yeah. I yeah. mean, they're not going to contribute. to What the hell do they know about policing? Nothing. They don't know crap about Other it. Other than police have been in the news for supposedly doing bad things. And so All right, they, they, get- co- they come in with that stereotype already, and then they let these... These people in government shape their mind because, well, yeah, they'll get the one-sided, yeah, uh, you yeah. Know, everything, it's, yeah. Um, hang on a second, I just mess. Here we go. The next one, mm-hmm. one individual with professional. We know what the recruiting person is. Yes. How do we get more minorities in the police department? Mm-hmm. It's every it? single uh, yeah, you need, we need qualified to have more. applicants. How mm-hmm. about that? How about you just pick the best? How about you do that? One individual with knowledge, expertise of mental health, substance use disorder, or homelessness. How would you like <laughs> to be an expert on homelessness? Jim? What if what if they picked up a homeless wino? Would that count? Why he has not? experience He's and be knowledge. An expert. <laughs> I guarantee you they've used substances. Who knows <laughs> what? But and if you threw it in the garbage, they probably used that too. Yeah. <laughs> so that yes, that's interesting. I mean, with knowledge or experience. Now it doesn't say, you know, it doesn't say necessarily who that's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. All right, we'll move on. One individual or caregiver with knowledge or experience the senior population of Golden Valley. Is there a big senior crime problem in Golden Valley? 
Hmm. You know that one lady? Remember that one lady on the Dukes of Hazard who was doing counterfeit $5 bills? Do we got yeah. somebody like that? <laughs> Maybe. Ah, that don't have Abe, don't have that twinkle in his eye on that yeah. bill. That ain't one of mine. <laughs> <laughs> is, is there, so there's a, is there a, oh. is there a little seniors or running around robbing banks? I mean, <laughs> so I wonder, I'm, I'm trying to figure this out because, yeah, there's not. There's not, I don't think, a senior crime problem. I think, though, that they can say that they're being inclusive because they're they're not being ageist here, but they're they're not bringing in the seniors to talk about it. They're talking about they're bringing in a caregiver with knowledge of senior issues, oh, I and see. that's the difference. It is you know it is all about again putting together a force of people that checking uh, the boxes. Well. I think in this case, you know, they've talked about when you get rid of a police force, you send in the social workers, you send in the, yeah, you know, and so by bringing in caregivers and people with knowledge segment of of, you know, uh, what keep they trying, desire. Keep trying, Jay. It's it's. I mean, I get what you're saying, but I mean I also, that that is why they're there. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying they're doing away with the Golden Valley Police Department. What I am saying though is that they're trying to boost boost that that alternative to policing right right instead of dialing 911 you call a social worker right next one parent teacher or administrator at the schools that serve golden valley oh that's wonderful how about we bring in the one that monitors the the multi-gender restroom (laughs) i don't know what the schools have to do inclusive enough yeah Uh, did Rob Robbinsdale did not kick out the police liaison officers, I mean, right? Just I don't, Minneapolis did, but I don't think I, Robbinsdale did. I don't did. think so. I don't so think there, so. that's probably where the link is there. Uh, how how do we deal with in school policing? Okay, but because there's gotta, so many fights. But at, you have a problem. Yes. though. the high schools are in uh, New Hope. Yeah, and in Plymouth, they're yeah. not in Golden Valley. Right, Golden Valley. They just have to serve Golden Valley, so Golden Valley students have to go there. Okay. Um, although schools. it might not be Robbinsdale, it Hopkins could be Hopkins as second. well. Okay, I just they I could they could grab one from either district. I didn't know there was a high school in Golden Valley. Maybe there's not. I know no, there's Sandberg so. Junior High or yeah. whatever you call it now, middle school. One individual who is a renter or lives in multifamily housing or group housing. Okay. I don't see one for a homeowner. Yeah, he's just gonna say there, there's that. There's not yeah. there's not one for for a nobody single family to, homeowner. He has to be a homeowner, be honest. you know. But but yet, and by people the way, who live in a house don't can't their houses be vandalized or littered or broken into? Or I would say it's much more common for yeah, but, somebody yeah, that owns a house to have crime done against their property than somebody who rents. But there could be a professional human resource recruiter though. That could be a homeowner though. See. <laughs> How about the last one, Jay? <sighs> Here's just like the first one. One individual that has been impacted by the criminal justice system. Okay. okay. You want another criminal that, out That's there. a wild card. Would yeah, that be I a criminal? Know. Yeah, it could be, yeah. So I got a ticket for jaywalking. Have I been have I been uh impacted by the criminal I once got an open bottle. Yeah. Okay, look, I admit I had a few nips for a softball game, it was in my glove. I forgot it was there. I was in, that was in, let's say I was 23, yeah. so that, I was impacted by the criminal justice system. Well, you could apply. I mean, if you doesn't lived in, if, if you lived in, gold, it does say not say that. Valley. You're right. I don't think it will be. Um, yeah, I don't say, I don't Well, if you're a community member looking to get involved with the city, well, I'm, I'm looking to get involved. Yes. You're in the, Doesn't say Golden Valley no, resident, oh, does it? No, community member. You can be part of the West Metro community. I am a community. I'm a community member of everybody. <laughs> we're part of Community Solutions. Exactly. We're a community. We're a member of Community Solutions. We're it's in our freaking name. Member we of every be, community. You know, they should have a member of the media, and that's who. Yeah. That's who we should. Why can't we be in there as a member of the media? Call us, Shep. <laughs> Jingle us up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know he's got you on speed dial. <laughs> okay, well, you think that's bad, folks. I'm yeah. going to tell you some things ain't going to change too much. Because they've got elections. Yes. In 
in uh, this year, November 2nd. Odd year elections, which... Oddly enough, they do. And, of course, they're at large. Think about it. If Golden Valley would add ranked choice voting, they could be as bad as St. Louis. They and St. Louis Park would be two of them continue to be two of the worst cities in Minnesota. I mean, they, mm-hmm. they got to catch up to St. Louis Park. Jake the Snake has got to call up Shep. Boy yeah. wonder. Say, hey, dude, either grow six inches or let's, let's you know, I mean, what's going on? You're behind. You're behind the times. <laughs> so, yes, the odd year at large. Oh, God. I don't even think St. Louis Park is at large. I think they have wards. Yes. They do. So, St. Okay. Louis Park has wards. So they're both two out of three bad. So no, neither one is gooder than the other. That's true. Okay. So. But remember, St. Louis Park's pretty big. So I think it would be hard to do at large. In a, well, I suppose some cities do it. Maple but, Grove's yeah. got it. Which is 48. And at large. Yes, they I do. I want to say there's four Two wards. at large yeah. and four wards, yeah. And I don't like that. No. They should copy Crystal's model or just have six wards. It, what, it's too big. Yeah. It's too much. Mm-hmm. Better yet, have five <sighs> words and a strong mayor. <clears throat> but yeah. even gooder. Yeah. Um, unless I don't like the people on the council. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, council member Larry Fanest is not running. Hmm. And our friend and pal, Jillian Rosenkurist, is running. Once it, well, you knew she was going to run. Cry mm-hmm. for me. <laughs> Give me a break. Should be one of these people you're dragging out of office. <laughs> so that leaves an open seat and one person running for re-election. Yeah. And there are seven people in the race. Jim. Wow. Zeben, as they would say in German. Zeben, I mm. think. Or I just made that up. I don't know. I'm not a German speaker. Eins, zwei, drei, guten Tag. I've there, sang right? in German. I don't know a lick of it. Really? Yeah. So that's kind of like me singing La Bamba. Well, Don't know anything of it. Remember, no, remember the episode? No, you, you singing La Bamba. It's like, la, 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 bamba. <laughs> blah, blah, dee, bitch, to the mata. Remember the episode uh, you know, where I talked I'm about songs? I'm making up words, I least. talked about songs that yeah. we did we couldn't, and I sang that one, uh, and I said La Bamba, and he said, well, you realize part of it's in Spanish. I'm like, oh, is that why I can't understand it? <laughs> And then yes. the other one was that informant song. Yes. The Snow Guy. Yeah. And I, I can't. I, here's a great, I couldn't understand it either. Here's the great right. thing about that informant song. Yeah. I looked at, there's a YouTube out there somewhere of songs of lyrics. I still couldn't understand it when I when I read the words. <laughs> it <was> just, <laughs> that's all I hear. Yeah. Like the beat to it, actually. But that's, I can't. I can't. I, I, I have no idea what the hell he's saying. It doesn't matter. All right. So the people running, <laughs> let me announce the people running. Okay. S- stick with me on this. We have Loretta Arredondo. Is that right? Yeah, that's good. We've got the former councilwoman, Joni Clausen. She's running again. Um, Did she run for me? No, she didn't run for me. She ran for something and got yeah. beat and lost. Her- I don't remember what she did. Andy Johnson. Hey, there's a name I can pronounce. <laughs> That's close to yours there. Yeah, it's not Got half far. of it. Yeah. yeah. No kidding. Then we have somebody running that I found is running with Miss Rosenquist. Oh. And it's a hyphenated name. God, I love him. Yeah. Denise Lemire Anderson. Okay. Okay. Wow, even even her name. <laughs> her name. Well, I, when I saw her name, I'm like, I got to find more about this chick. Um, okay. Well, and, well, it, you might want to watch saying that. I, even her name is feminist. Oh yeah, exactly. I mean, it, a it's hyphenated. B La Mer in French means the mother. Oh, so yeah. it, you, you can't get get more. I just yeah. wonder if she's the Anderson or if she's the La Mer. Yeah. Which one is she? I wonder. Related, I'm going to guess related she's, to Jacques. she's got to be the Lemire. Yeah. yeah, or as Sid Cartman used to call him, Jack Lamar. <laughs> then we got, and I thought this person was in jail, Drew Peterson. <laughs> what? I don't think that was oh, him. Oh, okay. Uh, well, here's the thing. If, if you've got a name like that, you know, yeah. it's kind of like if your name was Al Capone, yeah. you might want to go by something different. Right. You don't see a lot of Hitlers running around. Yeah, but I mean, you could be yeah. Drew S. Peterson. You know, right. and nobody would... <laughs> 
Nobody, but I saw Drew yeah. Peterson. Wait a minute. I saw a Lifetime movie on that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Girlfriend there, Jillian Rosenquist. Mm. And then we got my favorite name in here. <laughs> <laughs> we got, we got, and I tried to find information on this guy. Yeah. Orville, Orville Christian Satter. <laughs> Orville. Yeah. Poor guy doesn't stand a chance. Oh, man. You know what he ought to do? What? He ought to get the Orville Redenbacher uh, logo. He ought to have yeah. that as can Just give out popcorn to everybody. That You'd might remember work. him. Absolutely. You'd remember him in a second. He's going to give you popcorn? Yeah. Orville Christian Satter. Mm-hmm. Now, does that sound like, or you think that's real? Is that a real name? Yeah. You don't meet many Orvilles in, nowadays, but. You could uh, be OCS. Yeah. He, he needs something like that. He you needs... couldn't find anything on Orville, huh? Uh, we'll get to that, but oh. no, I could not find anything on wow. Mr. Redenbacher. So that's that's the set. Now, four of them have websites I, that I can find. Yeah. Okay. And, and again, that's according to the Secretary of State's webpage. If you go to the Secretary of State web, webpage, right. Joni Clausen has one. Jillian Rosenquist, of course, does. Uh, her 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 friend Denise Lemire Anderson also does, and this Andy Johnson dude has one. Yeah. So Loretta uh, does not have one. She does have a Facebook page though. Oh. Drew Peterson from jail does not have one. <laughs> and Orville Redenbacher Christian Slater. That's what I'm gonna call him, Christian Slater. That's better. Uh, or, that that might get him some votes. Or O R C S. That's his yeah. new name. Orville Redenbacher Christian Slater. Uh, does not have filed on August 6th, but yeah. no information whatsoever. Mm. Yes. Uh, <coughs> it, free piece of advice from, you know, this comes from the uh, political consulting arm of Community Solutions. Don't jump into a race before you're ready to run. Huh. You know? No, they jump in and then they... they uh, they figure that out later. Yeah, you, you can't be a name on a ballot. Why do it? I, I, so I'm with brag, you there. Get, but... Brag to your buddies. Look, I'm on the ballot. That's great. Okay. Um, Jody Clausen. Yes. Let's start with her. Um, Let's do it. Uh, her website is Clausen, the number four, council.com. Now, she does have a lot of things here about supporting police. Uh, which certainly will put her at odds with <laughs> these yeah, commissions yes. that are putting up there. Um, she complains a lot about fiscal responsibility. The last time, I, this is a quote from her. The last, I don't know if this is true or not. Don't care. The last time I ser- served, I supported the debt reduction plan, watching where our money was going. Now, during the pandemic, we had a $1.1 million increase to the budget to meet the agenda, blah, blah, blah. The pandemic was not an excuse uh, for a first-time million-dollar levy increase. So, so, I mean, you know, I'm not – they had no problem changing streets from 28 feet to 26. I don't know what that – are they narrowing streets over there? It could be. You know, that's a very Golden Valley thing to do. I like this statement here. Yeah. My third and final reason for running is to provide a balance on the council. Extreme politics do not belong on our council, which is designated as a nonpartisan body. Yep. We need a balance, and our residents deserves that. Everyone does not share the same values and beliefs. As, as in elected officials, it's our responsibility to listen to all sides and come up with a solution. Finding a balance and working together. Now, I I can go along with that. Her last paragraph. Yeah. Eh, I know. Kind of just, you know, it's kind of like it's, it's kind of like watching a movie with a bad ending. Match and it ends up in a freaking count out. It's, uh, right. I don't even. You can read it if you want. I don't. I don't want. But to. I, here's what I don't understand. It's like I'm going to be the balance between sanity and and not. Ville, right, but I, I want to prioritize equity, environmental issues. <laughs> I, yeah, she <laughs> complains about that and then kind of does it herself. I yeah. mean, it's sort of what's a cookie on a website, Jay? A what cookie? does that mean? Um, that is where they capture some information about you 
Um, supposedly it remains anonymous, but it has to do with like your IP address and stuff so that it makes it easier when you come back to the website and whatever. Just wonderful. Yeah. I go to Andy Johnson's website and that's what it does. Yeah. Man, I got cookies. That's what it says. I got cookies. So yeah. how do I, I don't want cookies. Um, I don't know. Does it give you an opportunity to say no to cookies or no? It Does just it sticks yeah. this thing in my face the whole time, and I can't read it. Mm. No, I'm already on it. What difference is it? It's a make? very generic website. Uh, well, I, I guess it he's got some good there. stuff down lower. Yeah. But um, hmm. he was a naval officer. Yeah, you know, his his issue stuff is... Um, He's a city planning commissioner. Shoot. There's some things yeah. on here I can, uh, like for example, he has this whole thing on plain language, yeah, which, um, and redesigning the, their website does need an update. I'll mm-hmm. agree with that. Uh, their boards and commissions, I do like that they're uh, on film. He says something about. Uh, a summary not being written. They must not have good uh, uh, minutes. Mm-hmm. And I can dig some of his plain language stuff. Yeah. Um, there's some stuff, though, that anytime, anytime I click on housing for a candidate, yeah. I'm always just going, uh, just again, <laughs> it's, you know, Livability. Anyone who works here must be able to live here. Well, why? Yeah. You know, do you have roads in the city? Do you have a bus? Do you have? Why do they have to live there? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I don't want to live there. I, I go where my job is. You know, my regular jobs in Rogers. I don't want to move there. No. So. You know, uh, when I when I before I worked for myself and now you know it's like I can't get away from my job because yeah. I live with it. <laughs> Uh, being my own boss. But um, as far as when I worked in corporate America or whatever, I wanted to be as far away from that place as possible because exactly. I didn't ever want to see it until unless I was there working. Yeah, you live close to work, boy. You're gonna oh. get you're gonna get called into work. Well, that happens too. <laughs> hey, get Bradley in here. He lives down the street. <laughs> <laughs> I saw him suntanning earlier. He can come in. <laughs> they did not see me suntanning. I'll, I'll guarantee that. Yeah, you were barbecuing. That that's probably more like it. And the second I see PPPs or affordable housing, I just want to barf. Mm. I do say this: discontinue TIF. That's good idea. Good. What does he want to replace it with? Well, he says discontinue tax increment financing. The current TIF balance owed by the city is eight point four million dollars. That's the burden on yeah on taxpayers. He doesn't say about replacing. You don't have to replace no. it. You can just say, hey, you want to start a business? You do the same thing everybody else does. Yeah. Uh, That's not what most people do, though. <laughs> Uh, in summary, fiscal disparity and TIF cost taxpayers three million bucks a year. Wow. Uh, let's see. Uh, he's got a few too many numbers on. There. He wants to link more neighborhoods, parks, and businesses with bike paths and sidewalks, uh, and increase safety and mobility for bikers and pedestrians due to changing resident needs. I need. Be wrong about that, but he. Invigorate downtown with accessible places to live, shop, eat, work, socialize with neighbors, and connect with city services. Let me ask you a question. Yes. What is downtown Golden Valley considered? Is that off 55 there? I, I believe so, yes. Okay, they could use a little revitalization down there. Yeah, but I mean, but it's I, the I, same plan. If- Bike paths and, and sidewalks. But that's what it'll be. You know, it's going to be parking minimum, parking maximums, rather, and it's going to be... You know, using making it as hard as possible for cars to navigate through there, and it's—I don't know. I—I I don't believe they're at uh, twenty miles an hour yet. I'm surprised that they're not. Well, um, they can't on the county roads. It would right. be only the urban roads, the, the city streets, that yeah. they could do that. On. Right. Um, I funding about police. Um, Fully staffed the Golden Valley Police Department at 32 officers. He says it's currently yeah. at 26 with the best qualified sworn officers. I like it. 
um, fully fund their first responders, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I mean, that's, I can go along with that. I can go along with this guy about 25% so far. Yeah. Um, maybe, maybe closer to 30, 35. Yeah, maybe, maybe. And, and maybe there's nuances in here. I like the idea of, a. a a long-term water and sewer lines. That's something that should have been done. This is a first-ring suburb uh, built in the 50s. They should have had a long-term yeah. plan a long time ago. You know, you're going to have to establish that. Um, so, you know, I mean, I, I I don't hate everything I've seen. Yeah. Develop mixed-use zoning districts that combine restaurants, grocery stores, affordable housing, and other businesses. Okay, and See, back to that's, the that's what I was talking about with yeah. downtown. That's what will happen. Same thing everybody else does. It's like, It'll okay. be everything on top of each other. Yep. It's got to be dense. It's got to be. He does have a blog. Yeah. Maybe I need to start reading that. But he sounds He sounds like a Democrat, but not a socialist. Which I could live with in Golan Valley, <laughs> you know. It that, would that be would an be, improvement. That would be a vast improvement. <laughs> <laughs> he does so, rip on the police peace commission pretty good. That's good. He definitely backs public safety. All right. I mean, maybe this is. We'll have to talk to him a little bit more. But yeah, maybe. Um, maybe we should reach out to him. Well, who knows. Uh, He's a member of the Chester Bird Legion? Hmm. I've won some good money there. <laughs> you have something to talk about. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. All right. Moving on. Okay. Who's next on the Hyphenated name. Okay. Denise for GV.com. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. This is all I should have to read is this one paragraph. Okay. I'm going to read more, but this is all I have to read. Why vote for Denise? Jay, why would you do that? Uh, I've been asking myself that since I... I've been asking myself that for a whole half an hour now. Yeah. Yeah. With 20 years of progressive human resources. Well, she, she had me for the first four words. Yeah. People together to both big and small, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. doesn't matter. Um, I, I'm lost. She's been on the Golden Valley Human Rights Commission. Okay, I'm lost already. Yeah. I'm already lost. Well, this is written by somebody that was like they're writing something for a corporation. It's full of corporate speak. Uh, it's, it's got it, it, that diversity. Yeah. Way. Unfortunately... I don't know. This is probably the winner. But, On her issues um, page. Well, who knows? If she's I mean, campaigning with Jillian. I don't know. know. Maybe they both go down. That, doubtful. A dedication to inclusion, equity, and diversity. Boy, wh- what was that plagiarized from? 5,000? Fiscally responsible. You cannot implement socialism and be fiscally responsible and, and all that It doesn't stuff. work that way. It just is not possible. You run out of people's monies. And you can't be responsive to citizens' ideas and concerns if you're if you're implementing a partisan agenda. Yeah, right. Impossible. Not possible. Mm-hmm. But Jay, I know you love public transit options. Oh boy. Oh, bike and pedestrian accessibility. Give me a fan. Give me a fan over here. Yeah. Are I'm, you sweating I'm, up a I'm, little bit? I'm heating, man. I'm heating. I'm like Woo. I'm like uh, one of those soccer moms yeah. that hears college readiness, or <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> one of those other terms. Uh, career path. Career path. Baby. That's it. Woo. <clears throat> <laughs> Environmentally sound policies. Yes. I mean, <sighs> oh my God, Jay, yeah. turn the temperature down in here. You know, I bought one of those environmentally sound CDs. It was like a waterfall with a bunch of birds. It helps me sleep at night. <laughs> oh, I love it. Now I want to see. Yes. She's got a Facebook page, too. Oh. And she has a joint. What the hell is and it? And Twitter. Oh, she tweeters, too? Oh, yeah. Oh, God. We, we got to follow her. Get yeah. on Community Solutions and follow her. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
So I, I thought it was interesting how public safety is important, but there's really nothing said about police. Because, right, everybody's using the term public safety. Reimagine public safety, right? right. Is the, the war cry for Minneapolis um, and, and all these cities that are burning down. Reimagine public safety. Um, so, just, hey, public safety. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. What does that mean? But you're right. I what, mean, what, is, what does it mean? It don't mean nothing. It don't mean nothing. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't understand it. I don't get it. I, I, I mean, there's a list of things here that are very vague. I have four mutual uh, friends with her on Facebook, by the way. Really? So I think if she... Oh, she's been endorsed by Outfront Minnesota Action. Oh, boy. That already tells you something. Yes, I think she's the Lemire part. Because she's... Yeah. There's some guy named Randy Anderson who keeps tagging her. Hmm. I'm assuming that's the husband that's shorter than her. Okay. Oh, did I say that out loud? I'm sorry. She could be in heels. <laughs> you don't know. You can only see the hey, headshots. Hey, I'm about three quarters of an inch taller than my wife, so I guess I, should, I, guess yeah, I shouldn't talk. That's right. She, if she ever put heels on, yeah. I would definitely be shorter. <laughs> 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 Hey, you'll be glad to know that that Austin Burger guy. Yeah. Remember that cheeseburger guy from New Hope? Cheeseburger guy. Put a sign guy. out for her. Yeah, he ran and then dropped out or something. I don't remember. It doesn't matter. Uh, I think we must should. Must not have been very memorable. Okay. Yeah. I got to look up uh, her Facebook page here because I want to. Oh, I found it. Oh, I found it. I found it. I found it. I'm going to like it, Jay. What do you mean? I'm going to like the page. Okay. It's gone up seven likes just since we went on the air. Really? And we're not even live. How does that work? I We're just incredible. <laughs> okay, so it's liked. Okay. Now, I want you to know that she has an event coming with a meet and greet. It's a safe... Socially distant outdoor venue in one of Golden Valley's wonderful parks. Yeah. When the hell is it? Oh, much they all agree with each other. Right. Oh, there's a whole bunch of them. They're doing a whole bunch of these meet and greets. Really? Just the two of them? <laughs> Just the two of us. Uh, Lions Park, Natchez Park, Hampshire, Medley, and Wildwood. Hmm. Wildwood! Oh, 10 to 12 on a Sunday, at least done before the Vikes. Uh, I guess she's not the church-going type. <laughs> well. <laughs> Jay, I'll be quiet right there. I won't say anything. Meet and greet here. Uh, That's what I'm going to say. With from, I'll be out of town. 12 at 1601 Louisiana Avenue, Golden Valley. So you're going to have to be there. Yeah. <laughs> yep, see you there. <laughs> uh, that's good. Okay, so. Yeah. She's with uh, our favorite council member there. Yeah. Speaking of her. Let's take a peek at why she's running for re-election. Why is she running for re-election? Her site is kind of hard to read, and it's not mobile-friendly. No, it definitely isn't. It's not. Like, her big campaign picture that's supposed to, like, sell her, you know, like the first thing you see, like, you're supposed to be amazed by and be like, oh, I think I'm going to read more. It looks like it's like a bunch it's of like, blurry trees. It, yeah, it's blurry trees, and it cuts, like, you can see the edge of her hair, and the rest is, like, all off screen, and there's, like, a button that's, like, Oh, I see. I didn't even kind realize. Kind of behind the navigation. Didn't even band. realize that was her. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> so. uh, I didn't bring my laptop. They got a cute dog anyway. It looks like a golden yeah. or something. I don't... An endorsement from Senator Ron Latz. Oh, well, that means a lot. Yeah. She went with Latz and not the Fonz, huh? I guess so. Or Fonz might... But is. 
Where is he? Is he north or south? I don't remember. Who? The Fawns. Maybe maybe she's not in his district. North. Oh, north. so she is yep. in his district. Okay. Hey. Let's see what we're going to get from her. I'm supporting Jillian Rosenquist. Hey. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I want to clip that. I'm yeah. supporting Julian, Julian Rosenquist. I want that clipped. I'm name. the Fonz. <laughs> <laughs> Arthur Fonzarelli, Winkler the Third Junior. Yep. <laughs> yes. Uh, um, she wants the city to be more welcoming and inclusive. Okay, you show me people that aren't welcome in Golden Valley. Yeah, who's and... turned away? Who's turned away at the border? Uh, I'd like to know. Um. They have a de- actively aggressing climate change. As a green step five city with an ambitious, measurable goals to reduce our carbon footprint, and my guess is you haven't reduced it at all. That's my guess. Uh, mm. Adding native planting. Is that Indian? <laughs> okay. That sounds very racist. Why would you stick natives in the ground? <laughs> She's telling us she hid the bodies. We just don't know where. Oh, yeah, boy. (laughs) And pollinator safe practices in adding organics recycling. Well, I'll tell you what, Jay. That's that's enough reason right there for her to be reelected. Oh, boy. Supporting housing choices and stability for all. Really? Stability for all. Hey, you lost your job? Hey, don't worry. Stability for all. Yeah. You know? Hey, you got a job 100 miles away? Stability for all. And again, she keeps using the word public safety. And this, this, is, this, this really is difficult here. Um, with dedicated public safety staff in addressing mental health and social service support needs, mm-hmm. is that the job of the city council? No, it's not. It's not. Why don't they go to the doctor if they're having problems? No, I mean, and, and let's read city facilities and equipment. Hey, we have got good mental health parks. Okay, that equipment yeah. improves your mental health. M- mental health parks. That's what she says. So, like uh, social service support needs. The hell are they? <laughs> yeah. If you're an oh. alcoholic, come to city hall. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, that's not at the parks. I imagine somebody like on a swing with a shrink on a swing next to him. And could be. Could be. Instead of laying down somewhere. You yes. Know. Emotional support parks. Like maybe you, you go and you can. Yeah, she still hasn't blocked me know. on Twitter. It's well, amazing. Yeah. She tweets a lot. You know. It, also, he, out, out Front Minnesota has endorsed yeah. her. Uh, she is. Supporting public transit options with Representative Dean Phillips, and yeah, Mike Freiberg, Patty Akam. Um, you can't have both. Say uh, Denise for GV. I yeah. just became her nineteenth follower oh, on good. Twitter. Wow, burning it up. Vote for uh, me for solutions for safe, secure, and sustainable. She, she saw she saw that couple log and she was like, "Oh crap!" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, she can, she can uh, block me. That's fine. Uh, so Jillian knows what she's doing and reflects Golden Valley's values. That's scary. I am also confident that she'll strike on the right balance of police and community public safety to protect everyone's right to fair, respectful, and effective public safety. I encourage you to vote, well, whatever, whatever. Uh, so public safety that is fair, respectful, and effective. Sometimes, I mean, yes, we, we want it fair, but they, they, want, they want some people to be treated more fairly than others. <laughs> you know, some people are more equal than others, and so you have to treat them more fairly than others. Hmm. Um. So I, I have a real problem with this. Um, I just well, I have a problem with pretty much everything. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, follow her on Twitter. It should be enough. Yeah. I, but again, it's a partisan agenda. Uh, her pal is a partisan agenda. Retweets Tim Walls. Uh, so on and so forth. Women winning. That's another. That's yeah. a pro-abortion group. Um, so yeah, you're getting what you're getting when you're when you're 
you know, you know what you're voting for. I don't, I don't know what else to say. Yeah. Uh, but here's the real problem. I mean, is this really Golden Valley values? And, and that's a discussion that needs to be had because this city is one of a good number in Minnesota that have odd year elections yeah, 53, for the municipal. 52 now, maybe? Yeah. Uh, which isn't the majority, not even by a long shot. But, the, I mean, there's, there's enough of them that have them. Um, however, the numbers of voters that turn out for these odd year elections is pathetic. And... When but you, that's by design. I that mean, is by design. Who, who want it, do it that way on purpose. You know, it allows them to control uh, the, the outcome, really, because a lot of people don't want to come out and vote other than every two years. And they're not going to ever come out on an odd year and vote for something. Uh, so really, I mean, we have those people to thank for, for this, first and foremost. But as far as government goes to be able to have that where you just have to turn your base out, you know, and you go to the political people and you go get a thousand votes in a yeah. city of 22,000. Yep. Yep. And with seven candidates, there'll be even less. Yeah. There's less to turn out. Right. Now think about it. I mean, I mean, you still f- probably have to get, I would say 30% to win. I mean, we're, we're looking at two. Uh, right, but even even and, even less than that, because if you got seven candidates, well, you only need let's say every even the most minor candidate will take five percent, eight percent, and if you got five might, people yeah. doing that, yeah. the top two or you know they could take less than fifty percent of the vote between the two of them. Oh yeah, yeah, benefit the so absolutely. You go, it's just, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's it's worthless over there. I just, uh. but I'm not going to say that it's a lost cause either. I mean, there are effective things that you can do to improve your chances, but I've never seen anybody run a really good campaign in Golden Valley. We, we've seen people try okay, you know, here's valiantly, the thing. but here's it, the it, thing. It, yeah. Here's the thing. You can't start running in August. Right. You and I preach this. If you were even thinking about it months before, it cannot be, okay, it's August 10th. I've decided in an election that you can early vote at the end of September that I'm going to run. Not mm-hmm. possible. You don't have the money. You don't have a logo. You don't have signs. You don't have a website. You cannot do that. Okay? And I, you and I say this a million times, and I don't care. I will say this every show if I have to. You cannot do that. It will not work. Even if you win, you lucked out somehow. Somehow you lucked out. Because it's not possible to put that together. Look, take it from somebody who's been in a campaign themselves, who's worked for others for 19 years. You cannot do it. <laughs> no do. Right. Cannot do. So I, yeah, it is. And there may be good. I don't know. There may be. But I'm telling you. And you got to know what you're up against. Here's the other thing you got to know. What are you up against? You're up against that DFL machine there. Yeah. They know. Drive down Douglas Drive. Okay. The same 10 houses from 55 until Medicine Lake Road. Yeah. Will have every DFL sign in their yard. They know where their people are. They got their list from somebody. Mm -hmm. Think Larry Finesse didn't give his list to one of these? Of course he did. Of course he did. And being supported by the unions. So you got, but, I mean, the yeah. unions, if you get people out, the u- unions could be 500 people in that city. I don't yeah. know. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's embarrassing. You know, they should be embarrassed at their election turnout. And I don't know how anybody on that council thinks that they represent any percentage of Golden Valley other than their little clique. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just. I mean, but that's not what it's about. It's about winning. No, it's about power. Yeah, it's all about power. And winning, and, and and who has control, and you know we, we know who that is in Golden Valley. We know who that is. Gee, Shep Harris is a moderate on that freaking council. I mean, that is where it's at now. It's gotten much more left in the mm-hmm. last four to eight years. I right. mean, there was a time I didn't think Mike Freiberg was that liberal when he was on the council. He was actually thoughtful and 
articulate. I mean, I didn't know behind the scenes he was being groomed. That's why. Mm-hmm. Uh, clearly, he had some, and good for him. He planned it. He executed it. I mean, you know, I mean, he had to go out there and and do it too. But you know, uh, I didn't think their council was so bad ten years ago. Yeah. You know, I mean, like I said, Joni Clausen could be approachable. Uh, there was that one Paula lady who was all right. Paula, Paula Pentel. Pentel. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, they had some people on there that I thought were were all right. Um, so you know, I mean, it all wasn't lost, but I mean, you know, it's done nothing but go the other, you know, yeah. a, a partisan way ever since. Ever since they've they've adopted every trendy uh, to to go. Yeah, but let this be a lesson. I mean, I know we're talking about Golden Valley specifically today, but and we've said this a million times whenever we're talking about anywhere specifically. This is going on all over the state. Um, if you have odd year elections, it is so that people can control who comes out to vote for them and they can hold on to power. Uh, if they do appointments, it is so that they can control who comes and, and in and, and make sure that it's, it's somebody that they agree, that they allow them the structure that they need to hold on to their majorities and continue to bring in people that agree with them. And that's something that we've got to shatter. And I think we're able to if we are able to employ the right strategies. But, you know, it's just finding people, Andrew, I, I think that are interested in able to do it. Yeah, in our time. I mean, yeah. always. Um, sometimes it's done for them. Mm-hmm. But it's not for a lack of effort. You talked about how many lit pieces you got. And, uh, oh, goodness. Yeah, I mean, you know, if, you, if one person does one, another person does 20. Yeah. I mean, you know, what do you think the end result of that will be? So, you know. Right. Yeah, I, d- I don't know. You know, it, it's pretty pretty hard when you don't work as hard as your opponent to win. Well, uh, and it's got to be year-round work got to be year-round work you know it's got to be planning all the time yeah you know but i mean you have to because you have to pay attention to what's going on in in the in your city you have to uh you know be on top of those meetings work sessions you got to know the budget yeah. they don't take in there's no off season in politics you know the first year of next year is the day after the election you know nobody goes golfing for three months it starts yeah. right then so I mean, I know that's depressing to hear, but, you know, it's just, it is what it is. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, so Golden Valley, be another year of fun, right? Yeah. <laughs> Jay, I think we've reached that time. Yes. By the way, uh, I could not find anything on uh, Drew Peterson. Okay. Orville Redenbacher, or the other lady, Loretta, she has a Facebook yes. page. There's not a whole lot on it, um, but she does have a Facebook page with right now two likes. Well, that doesn't mean She does anything. post yeah. quite a bit, um, but it's kind of – she posts a lot of things about Minneapolis. Yeah. And I, just, I don't really understand what the – I clicked on the About page, and there was nothing there, so I don't know. Yeah. Um, you don't have a website at this point. <laughs> I mean, what are we, six weeks out? It's going to yeah. be pretty difficult to get one, I think. Yeah. So, I mean, good luck there. I think uh might be more of a four-person race. but Yeah, and that's what I mean. I mean, when we're looking at maybe getting 30% or more, it's because when you have three invisible candidates, it, it makes it, but it... But I'll tell you it, what, the invisible candidates yeah. still get votes. They get some just because people are sometimes so fed up with the status quo true and they're just maybe yeah. friends and neighbors yeah and, and you so have that too um even if they just get a couple hundred all right jay words of wisdom community solutions once again prevents presents styling and profiling jet flying limousine riding wheeling dealing son of a gun with the sign off sermon words of wisdom to live by jason bradley Hmm. Kind of puts me on the spot there, doesn't it? (laughs) 
Yeah, but I do this every week, yeah. Jay. It's all right. I don't rehearse this before, and maybe I should. Maybe I should write some notes, but... Uh. Well, you can have a short sermon, too. <laughs> or a long one. Yeah. Or say whatever's on... Oh, sometimes... Sermon about the bikes, you're going to hell. <laughs> I'm... I am... I don't know. Maybe I'm better off talking about the Vikings. I, the more I look at what's happening in society, I think maybe for a lot of us, the easier it is to check out. You know? Circuses and bread, right? That's what the, the Romans had to keep them distracted. You know, the Colosseum, the... And yet, uh, a mighty empire still collapsed from within. And unfortunately, I think we're kind of on the same course. <laughs> I know uh, that's not a very positive message to send, but we got a lot of people that just would rather be entertained, rather pick what's cool, and they don't really care about their responsibility to other people. And so I hope that that we can see the folly in that. And that we do have a responsibility to one another. Life isn't all about how much fun can we get out of every day. I mean, that's, that's, that's a child's perspective, you know. This isn't a very good day because I'm not having fun. Well, being an adult, you know, we, we have to meet challenges head on. But yet we have so many people in this society that they don't want to do the hard things. They don't want to be bothered to go vote. Or they don't want to do the research to know who to vote for and find out what the truth is. Or they don't want to stand up against injustices that they see in, in the world. You know, they're okay with letting the uh, social media companies censor them. They're all right with Planned Parenthood killing millions of babies. They're all right with corrupt government that continues to break all of the rules and, and be completely self-serving. And they don't ever stand to their feet and, 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 and just determine that they're going to change something. So... I don't know. I mean, what what do we do? What are you know the revolution? The Revolutionary War was won with a minority of the American population. We don't need everybody, but we do need a number of super dedicated people that are willing to take that cause to the next level. You know, I think you can correct me if I'm wrong, Andrew, but it was like 10 percent of the population, or not the Union, but in the Civil War and uh, on America's side, right? I could give you a percentage. I it, mean, that actually served? Yeah, that did anything. Um, that's hard to say because many of them worked in industry, too. Right. So it's, it was definitely not everybody. Right. <laughs> Put it that it way. It was a very small percentage. And we're only looking for 2% of people across the state. 2% of like-minded people. 2% of people that vote... The way that we two percent, just like the milk. Yep, two percent of the people that voted with that moral structure, and we can change the state. I mean, really, with almost every city, we could have a majority of like-minded people in appointed positions, in elected positions. At the local level, it, the things would look so much different. Our cities wouldn't be under so much assault from from all of these liberal policies that are driven of all of this equity. And instead, we could make them equal. What a concept. Equality for everyone instead of just for a few. Where we could get rid of racial tensions instead of... Co that we could have... Schools where we're all about 
having kids learn more about math and reading and science rather than critical race theory and critical gender theory and, uh, you know, lowering the standards so that everybody passes, everybody gets an A. Every, you know, it, we are on a self-destructive path that we have to pull out of before we hit the side of the mountain. And I fear that we don't have long. I do. And I know that that's pessimistic. But I fear that if we don't get involved, those of you who have an interest in politics, I believe are in some way supposed to help. That you have that interest for a reason. You have that interest because it was put in you to to not be about politics, but to be about govern the 2% that is... Uh, elected or appointed, or whether that is to start a blog, to start a podcast, to, uh, to, to volunteer, to support, um, to speak out and, and write letters to the editor, to write your, your governmental officials at every level and speak out about issues that are important to you. And just to stand and be counted. You know, we 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 could do something. We can't we can't work with a handful of people and hope to change anything. Maybe maybe our immediate surroundings, maybe we change a city. But the pressure on those cities that change is still immense because you've got the counties putting pressure on them. You've got regional government pushing putting pressure on them. You've got city staff, school staff putting pressure on them. You've got professional organizations and national uh, organizations and all sorts of things putting pressure on them because we're headed toward a collision point, okay? You've got one side that believes in freedom, that believes in uh, being able to earn uh, as much as your hands are and your mind are able to to do uh, on and and that there's no limits on that other than yourself. And then you've got the other side that's like, no, government's got to do that for you because you didn't build that, right? Unfortunately, we've got too many people that say you didn't build that, you can't build that, you won't build that. Combustion engines are gone. By 2030, 2035, there's going to be very few car companies left making them. And right now, all the electric ones still stink. What, you can get 300 miles? And then what, sit and wait for it to charge up again? Oh, that's fun. So what are you going to do? There are no options. No options right now because we're afraid to step up and do something amazing. But we can't. We can't do that. We have to stand. We have to put our hat in the ring. We have to sacrifice for what is good or else we will lose it. And once we lose it, it's gone forever. So who's with me? Who's with us? Because we're out there and we're going to do our best to make sure that we help you become successful. But that's where I say we can't do it alone. We've got some good people that are out there changing their cities, changing their school districts, changing their counties right now. But we need more of you. And we can do this. We can do it, Minnesota, because we're hardy. We can do it because we're stubborn Swedes. We can do it because we have the opportunity and we have the desire. Good will always win if we meet evil on the battlefield. But we got to do it. The choice is ours. So let us know you're in. Email us, commsolutionsmn at gmail.com. That is commsolutionsmn at gmail.com. And we'd love to talk to you about it. Let us know what's going on in your area. We'll blab about it on the show. Um. The times are dire. 
The times are desperate. And we need men and women of character to stand up and make, make hope alive again in this great state and in this nation. We love you, Minnesota, but now it's your turn to get to work. If I get too caught